How you doing? Uh, wow, I got a big one for you today. Um, this is a LFO generator that you can use from within Max for Live that allows you to modulate anything. Uh, basically, any control part of any device you can control with this. This is really, you know, any other device. It could be any Max device. It could be any Ableton device. You could even probably, I, I would assume. Oh, well, yeah, you could wrap other devices in even VST things. I think I haven't tried that yet, but we should give it a try one of these days. Okay, so here's what it is. It looks pretty daunting at first. Uh, but it's not that bad. I actually saw a couple of examples like this and, and borrowed a couple of techniques from some other folks, but the biggest thing I did here, the most important thing is it's all on one page, so you can see the whole thing, you can kind of see how it works. Um, the couple of things I, I had to borrow from the built-in abstractions for Max for Live, just to make things a little bit easier about selecting devices and selecting device parameters, uh, that's kind of down here. These are built-in functions that you get when you get Max for Live. Um, you can see this is a select device Max patch they have already nicely set up for you. This is a select parameter already nicely set up and uh, device parameter remote that means remote control that parameter so that's already there awesome don't have to worry about that great so we're just gonna worry about this part it's not as scary as it looks now the most important thing I wanted to create an LFO that was synchronized to uh, live first off right so uh, quarter note 16th note eighth note measure whatever it has to be synchronized also wanted it to be uh, sample accurate why not right you can do that kind of thing so there's some built-in stuff I've seen people do with like you know generate their own ramps and all that kind of stuff. Didn't want to do that. Wanted to use as much built-in stuff as possible. So I focused on using this thing up here. It's called a phaser. Now what a phaser does is a uh, it's a ramp. You see it's a it's an MSP function because there's a little tilde there. Okay, so what phaser does is starts at zero and ramps to one. Piece of cake, right? So if you have a parameter zero to one, nothing to full, right? Okay. Now the important thing up here is you'll see phaser the tilde means it's an MSP audio rate function. 4n means it's going to lock that to the quarter note. So within a quarter note, it's going to go from 0 to 1. Okay? At lock 1 means synchronized to Ableton. Okay? So it's synchronizing to Ableton's clock. Right? So now, no matter what happens, it's going to be synchronized to Ableton. Fantastic. And this is putting out sample rate signals. This is, is you know really meant for like reading samples out of a table, doing all kinds of stuff. So you see the little bumblebee uh, styled thing here. And um, once I hit play, you'll see it will be spitting out data really fast. Okay. Now, that's great, but none of the controls I really want to control are like 44,000 or 48,000 times a second. That's kind of overkill, right? I don't want to drive uh, MS Max crazy and all that kind of stuff. So I use this function called a snapshot. Okay? Snapshot's important. What's going to happen is every time I bang the input, it's going to spit out the value it was at that moment. So everything's still in sync, and I use a metronome to bang out uh, values at some set rate. So I'm doing it much, much lower than uh, the, the actual sample rate. I'm doing it at 10 milliseconds, right? So I, I bang this out, I get a value out, and that's the value I use. And also, at that point, it becomes a regular, uh, a regular max style value as opposed to MSP signal rate kind of style value. So it's just a little bit easier to deal with, a little less CPU, especially with all this math going on down here. It's not that crazy, but I didn't really want to like, spend that much time to, well, let me start the timer so over here that you can't see so that I'm not talking too long. All right. So, that's the phaser. It's really, really important to this whole thing. It's kind of the whole crux of it. All right. Then I have a metronome that is going to bang out those values at a lower rate than audio rate. And what happens, you see this load bang up here? That just means, all right, when the patch gets loaded, hit this guy, start the metronome. It also hits the get devices guy down here. So it preloads my devices, their parameters, and so on. Okay, so it hits that. Starts generating values. All right, now, just for sake of clarity, I have these dials here, just so you can kind of see the different sorts of LFOs that are possible. Now, uh, we'll, we'll turn down the audio over there. I probably cranked it way too far uh, to begin with. But now, I hit play, watch what happens. Okay, now, everything's up really high. I'm gonna turn that down, my rate here, my LFO rate, effectively. All right, so I've got five different types of LFOs for you here. The first guy is a straight ramp up. You see, he starts at the bottom, works his way up. So that, I'm just taking the straight value out of the phaser. I multiply it by 128, so I go from 0 to 128 for this dial here, so I can kind of see what's going on, right? Real simple, goes all the way up, and then snaps back to 0, right? Easy cake, ramp up. Now for ramp down, and I'm using this, I'm referring to this uh, uh, inverse function. I didn't use that in my last demo, I probably should have. It's, it's, uh, it's kind of a neat trick. Normally we'd say like, oh, subtract the number coming in here, like 127 from this value, but by saying, bang here, or, or not, depending on what, what computer language you're used to, you're actually saying, okay, subtract 127, or this from 127. So what I'm doing here is I'm just inverting that value. 
So instead of ramping up like this guy, this guy ramps down. And it snaps back to the top again. So it goes one, go all the way down to zero. One, go all the way down to zero. One, go all the way down to zero, right? Great. Okay, so I've got to ramp up, and ramp down. This guy over here, triangle, all right? A little bit more math. I take my ramp, which starts at zero, works this all the way to one, or in this case, now I've multiplied by 128, so it's going from zero to 128. I subtract 64 from it. By subtracting 64, now, instead of going from zero to 128, I go from negative 64 to positive 64, okay? I take the absolute value of that, means I go 64 down to zero, up to 64 again. I multiply that by two, I go from 128 down to zero, up to 128 again. And it cycles through, so zero, up to 128, and back down again, to zero, up to 128, back down again, okay? Nice linear, that's what makes him a triangle, he's linear. Next guy, this is even trickier now. This is a sine wave LFO over here. Now, how I'm doing that, I'm having the output of this guy drive the cycle. Now, cycle uh, is, by default, it has a sine wave in there, and it's normally, it's uh, uh, also an MSP function, so it's audio rate. So it's sitting there, I'm, I'm using the, the uh, this input here, which you'll see is my phase, and I, I hammer that with what's going on coming out of the ramp, or excuse me, out of the phaser, to lock that up. So that puts me in sync with what's going on and fires this cycle at the rate of the phaser as well. All right, again, here's our snapshot function, so it cuts down. We're using that same metronome, cut down how often it is, so we're not getting it 44, 48, 96,000 times a second. Now, because it's a sine wave, it's gonna go from negative one to one instead of going zero to one, and I don't wanna use that. So instead, I'm gonna add one to it. So now, instead of from negative one to one, it's gonna go from zero to two, okay? And then I multiply that, instead of by 128 over here, I only multiply by 64. So instead of going from zero to two, I go from zero to 128. Up and down, up and down. It looks a lot like the triangle, but it's not a linear. It's a sine wave, so it's a little bit smoother. It's gonna spend a little bit more time at the edges. Okay, all right, nice and smooth. Last guy, last but not least, have to have like a square pulse kind of guy, right? But, uh, so what's he doing? All right, he watches that ramp, sees the moment it goes beyond half, like it's halfway there, just snaps it up. So this guy's either zero or full value, zero or one, or in this case, it's multiplied by 128. So zero, snaps it to 128 and back again, all right? Now, a simple square wave has, it's off for as often as it is on. Now, we wanna make him special, so I have added this little pulse width uh, kind of control here. So, yeah, put it into, into non-edit mode. So what this is doing is saying, okay, instead of halfway, I can make this up and down. It's gonna say, all right, how often is it gonna be up or how often is it gonna be down? So I'm changing kind of the duty cycle or the width of the pulse, right? The on time versus the off time, basically, right? So now way down here, it spends most of its time on, just 8% of its time off, Whereas up here, it'll spend eight or 5% right now, because this is at 95, 5% of its time off, the rest of its time on, right? So that's kind of cool. If you want to like, have something that's synchronized, but not necessarily 50-50 on off kind of thing, you do that. All right. So this might be not the, the most efficient thing, because we've got five different varieties of LFOs running all the time. I'm going to leave that up to you guys. There's ways to use gates and switches to kind of limit who's really running all at once. But for purposes of this demo, I thought it was cool to have them all running at once, and you can sort of see the differences. Now, I only want to send one to my parameters though, so I gotta use this thing, this thing down here called a switch. Now what the switch does is it takes all five of these, you see switch five, and it's actually six inputs. One, the first one, determines what type of, or which one of these inputs to use, and then the other five are just one, two, three, four, five. So I have this little uh, live menu, which I'm using, and, and uh, you'll have to look up live menu and some other stuff, it's pretty easy to use. It can be off, which is, which is uh, the first one, if I say, you know, the first uh, uh, value, that just means don't send it to any of them. So, no, this guy doesn't get anything down here. Here's a little indicator so you can see what's going on. You choose the ramp up, that chooses the first one. Ramp down, chooses the second one. Triangle chooses the third one. Sign chooses the fourth one. And rectangle square chooses the last one. Okay, so now we're you know, choosing which one we want to use. Fantastic. Now, of course, this value is going from zero to 128 instead of from zero to one, which is what we really want. We could have, I guess, done the whole thing in zero to one to begin with, but I didn't. So we have to take that value that goes from zero to 128 and scale it. So here's the scale. Uh, zero to full, it's gonna scale that to zero to one. Okay, and notice it starts up an integer value, winds up as a floating point value, right? Because I want fractions in between. I don't want just zero or one, I want zero and all the, the decimal, or excuse me, the, uh, 
the, 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 the uh, fractional values in between, so that's what's going on there. Now, I got this thing over here, and this I, I have to thank uh, one of the guys on the Max Devices uh, forum page. Uh, he set this up, the original one. Um, his was from 0 to 128, though I changed it around a little bit. Um, basically, it's a little slider or uh, a little range setter here. So you can set, and this is this is something you can't do with the regular LFOs in uh, in live either, which makes it really kind of cool, in that you can set a low and a high value for the LFO, and it's going to work in between there, okay? And I neaten that up a little bit by feeding the, the low and high value into the scaler, so it's going to take whatever I set the low, like 52 and 88, that's going to become the range that I'm going to go in between, or 0.52 and 0.88. So instead of going from 0 to 1, it goes from 0.52 to 0.88, right? So that's all pretty cool. Then it sends it out to the actual device. And you'll see down here, all right, I have one of my LFO devices going on right here. And you can't see this right now because it's open, but you see this guy? All right, I have him currently mapped to the frequency of this auto filter. So you see him popping along according to this guy down and up. And it's also going from about half up to 88%. Say I wanted to go up to 100%. The highest value will go to because they want to increase the range a little bit. Look at that. Bang. Bang. How oh, cool, huh? Alright, let's change which one it is. Do a ramp down. Right? All the way up. Bang. All the way down. So now you can modulate anything. Um, now, let's uh, go for, for clarity's sake. If I go into presentation mode, you'll see just the things I wanted to keep in the presentation. Uh, the device uh, choices, my uh, time. I guess that quarter note say, right? That's this is max notation for saying you know quarter note, half note, whole note, two whole notes, four whole notes. I can slow it nice down, right? That's that's only effective when I have that much of forever. So there you have it. Uh, now I close this guy. It's probably gonna ask, I save it. Yeah, what the heck? All right, so I'll save that. It's gonna drive it a little bit nuts. I probably lost that. Maybe I should have done that because now it resets itself. So here you can see all the devices have it. And this is a little bit confusing. Uh, it'd be good to kind of neaten this up because you can see I have multiple instances of my LFO here. Uh, the grain delay, uh, chorus, all these other devices that I can then select. And I can select them across tracks, which is kind of wild. So uh, it's a little bit crazy. Let's get rid of that. And let's see. This is right now I'm on my chainsaw bass, which is just a, a, a kind of a, a regular instrument that uses, I think it uses uh, um, operator for sure. So let's choose the auto filter after bass chainsaw. Okay, auto filter after bass chainsaw. This could all be neatened up, you know. I mean, this isn't uh, exactly super ready for uh, heavy, heavy lifting yet. But okay, I choose frequency. I'm going to choose quarter notes, and I'm going to choose sine wave. And because it's a max device, I can, you know, all my parameters are kind of live sync to it. All right? So there you have it. Uh, I've got some other tracks out here. It's crazy. Over here, I've got a bunch of samples from High Rankin, uh, or one sample from High Rankin. Uh, and uh, my other track, I actually had this set to it here. So let's see, change those real quick. Brain delay. Uh...